Hey, Dr. Price, how you doing? Oh, doing great. How about you? Oh, I'm trying over here, brother. Hey, um, the show today is a little different format. Um, we're just conversating about things. And uh, let's see, turn this music down. Um, yeah, I was just wanting to know, what are your feelings on why, why should people believe that the Old Testament God is actually God Almighty or not just a fictitious being, a malicious fictitious being? And if he is God, aren't we in a world of shit? Uh, yeah, um, you look at um, the, uh, the goings-on in Israel and Gaza at the moment, uh, obviously there's a lot of uh, uh, fanatical religion at stake there, and people are thinking that, uh, like the, uh, the Palestinians and, and Hamas figure that uh, it's their Allah-given duty to wipe out all Jews, now, wait a second, uh, where would you get that idea? Well, of course, the Bible depicts uh, God telling Joshua and Samuel and others to just utterly wipe out the inconveniently placed Canaanites, uh, because uh, after all, they deserve it. They were polytheists and idolaters and had uh, sacred prostitutes and so on. Well, we can't have those guys polluting the earth with their presence. Uh, and uh, so and I, I don't think the uh, conquests, the blitzkriegs, you might say, in the book of Joshua actually happened. I, I pretty much, strangely enough, I kind of agree with fundamentalists on this, that uh, these things were really written long, long after the days of the, the Canaanites. And the point was to say that since the Israelite religion simply was the same as the Canaanite religion, that Yahweh and Baal were the same, and that the El, the, the Canaanite deity, and uh, Elohim, or El, or El Elyon, the Hebrew deity, they're, they're the same, really, and the, the whole thing is, uh, is so similar. And uh, when Hosea and uh, Isaiah and the others are excoriating their audiences for uh, practicing what the Canaanites do, well, uh, that's probably written much later, too. But why the heck did the Israelites do all that stuff? I mean, if, if the Exodus really happened, if Moses was really a monotheist, and, and they signed on to keep the covenant with uh, Yahweh or Jehovah, why would they have gotten into all of this to such a degree? Well, the, the answer historically is that uh, they weren't, uh, Mo Moses, if he existed at all, could not have been a monotheist. I don't think there was a historical Moses. And um, he was just sort of a literary incarnation of the Torah, which really stems from, I think, as late as the second century BCE. Others date this a couple of centuries earlier, but uh, there was this thing that, called the Deuteronomic Reform that was the, the manifesto of which was kind of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, and they they uh, tried to give a pedigree to this new and improved Israelite religion that was polytheistic, that combined uh, the father, uh, Elyon with the son, Yahweh, and made the uh, all the other uh, gods of the nations created by Elyon, they demoted them to angels, and so they were they created uh, monotheism and uh, stopped uh, sacrifices in your backyard. I mean, you could practically have a sacrifice at the barbecue uh, uh, <laughs> party, really, uh, almost the same thing, as long as you dedicated it to God. And, and uh, you had to follow the kosher laws and so forth, which they probably borrowed from Zoroastrianism, which they encountered in Persia. Well, uh, all everything was new, and when something like that happens, you're going to have people that are not going to go along with it. Well, what do you mean? So-and-so was okay yesterday, but it's a sin today? Uh, like after the Vatican II conference in Catholicism. What do you mean my Aunt Sophie's in purgatory because she had a steak on uh, Friday, uh, but now I can have one with no problem? Uh, nah. And uh, th this happens 
in religious reforms. You're never going to get everybody to agree. So uh, there was this uh, this big changeover. And uh, going back to the Canaanites and w- how they were allegedly influenced uh, uh, the uh, Israelites were corrupted by the influence of the Canaanites. That's really a, a fiction. Uh, the ancient Israelites simply were Canaanites, as the writers of Genesis with their genealogies admit. And uh, it was their religion, the, the pre-Deuteronomic religion, like the pre-reformed uh, religion and what the the conquest narratives are all about is to say to those who are still uh, advocating the old ways, no, you got to root that out. That they're they're making uh, the Canaanites in Joshua's day uh, into caricatures of their own Hebrew ancestors. <laughs> what they're saying is, let's fight uh, what we used to be and turn away from that. To, to the new way, uh, which isn't really new because uh, Moses taught it. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. You want to give them, give it a good pedigree. Well, uh, so the uh, the idea of God is this uh, this genocidal maniac. That's kind of, I don't know that anybody ever actually thought it was their duty to kill all the Canaanites or anything. Apparently they didn't because they're all still alive throughout the Bible. Uh, and it was, I think, a way of just saying, let's put those ways behind us. Let's disassociate ourselves from them to the point where we're depicting our own ancestors as the yeah. bad guys we conquered. Because what we really want to do is to conquer the lingering Canaanitism, so to speak, of ourselves. And uh, so I, I don't believe that ever happened, especially when you start getting into the book of Judges, where it turns out that, uh, like Joshua says at the end of that book, uh, well, a lo- we conquered a lot, but a whole lot of territory remains unconquered. And then he starts naming the places, and when he's done, like, wait a minute, did you ever <laughs> conquer anything at all? Uh, it, it still awaits to be conquered. I think that's a wink to the reader. Uh, they're trying to tell you, yeah, we know there was no no actual conquest. And then we just start looking at the stories in the book of Judges, where you have Israelite tribes, uh, one or two at a time, fighting Canaanites. Uh, it's a whole different picture. <clears throat> they're, they're, uh, the Israelites are gaining independence from Canaanite tyrants. That's a whole different thing. Uh, and, uh, and and so forth. So they've, they've kind of revised the history of it, which people always did, to legitimate a particular situation, uh, a particular regime's views. And uh, the uh, so did they ever butcher and slaughter whole populations? I don't think so. Uh, so when you say, well, but the Bible says that God told them to do it, yeah, that's that's uh, dangerous because uh, people are obviously not uh, sophisticated. I hate to say this. I don't mean s- they're not smart enough, but they don't know enough about the history of the Bible and all that to to make to draw these distinctions and for them they figure well yeah god's within his rights to uh, just wipe out whole populations and tell us to do it and then you have like people like william lane craig um just dancing around this saying well uh god was uh, was justified uh, actually to me the moral problem is imagine those poor israelites having to kill all those canaanite infants in, in, uh, that's in, the problem uh, get out of here please just shut up you're, you're bringing your own viewpoint into disrepute uh but uh in general the idea of of uh the, the biblical God, it does seem really clear that people just made God into a kind of a totem that uh, that personified the the ethics as they knew them at given points in history. Mm. Uh, like Xenophanes, one of the pre-Socratic sophists, said, 
people make the Zeus and the others like human beings, but more powerful and immortal. If horses had a god, he'd be he'd look like Mr. Ed. Uh, and if, if lions had a god, he'd have a mane. Uh, and so there may be a deity, but but this stuff is all mythology. And yeah, I think that's true. Now, how did Christians ever deal with that? Uh, and and still are. Uh, the best uh, example I know of this was the great liberal theologian, Harry Emerson Fosdick, uh, back in the 20s. He, he wrote a couple of very interesting books, The Modern Use of the Bible and uh, A Guide to Understanding the Bible, and they're still well worth uh, reading. And he says, okay, there's such a thing as progressive revelation, uh, that uh, the same process of uh, humans uh, creating and imagining higher and higher views of God uh, is that's the uh, the um, top layer, if that makes any sense, of this evolutionary process. Uh, the uh, but the I'm sorry, that's the. That's the human side, uh, and it's it's a discovery, however, of what God is really like, step by step, because you're dealing with something that is ultimately incomprehensible. So it's no surprise that evolution in the idea of God would be a gradual shedding of unworthy descriptions of God. So mm -hmm. it's our being educated, and it's God at the same time gradually revealing to us more and more of what he's really like. Well, the prop now that, that kind of makes sense to me, but I have to admit, it, it's sort of, uh, there's a big problem with it because progressive revelation uh, is uh, is sort of like saying no revelation. Yeah. Uh, it's what is the difference between human imagination about God and revelation about God? It, it's it's just putting a halo around people's speculations. Wow. And uh, so, uh, what do you say about it? Well, uh, that might be the best you can do. Like the Eastern Orthodox theologians speak of apophatic theology or negative <laughs> theology. They say that you can't comprehend the eternal, infinite spirit. Come on, let's face it. But you can at least de uh, depart from more and more misconceptions. At least you'll be closer to it. I respect that. That's uh, that's plausible. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you could understand God completely, God would be an idol because he would not even be as big as your brain. I mean, if you can comprehend God, that ain't much of a God. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's almost inevitable, but is there anything that corresponds to what we invent as, as a God? And uh, I uh, don't really think so. Um, you, you could take a Hindu view, also kind of Tillich's view, and say, well, yes, there there is an ultimate Godhead. It is being itself, not a supreme being, because that would be like, you know, just the top of the heap, like Zeus is the supreme being, but he's not, you know, uh, omniscient, ever-present and all that stuff. He's still a guy. Well, uh, the the biblical God is depicted as a guy, the, the the, uh, the top dog or top god. Uh, and uh, so that is a symbol for God. Tillich said God, quote unquote, is a symbol for God. Why is that? Well, we can't compre comprehend the whole real thing. We have to have some kind of a symbol in mind to even reach out to God. And, and uh, you should keep in mind, like Jesus says in John chapter 12, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. Now, that is really profound. He's saying, it's not a mistake to believe in me, but get this straight. Uh, I am uh, a pointer to the real thing. Mm. I participate in it. Uh, it uh, I'm somehow part of it, but 
we don't want to have a personality cult like an Elvis cult centered on Jesus. Uh, that's not the point. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Hmm. Yeah, now you're getting close to saying that Jesus is the visible representation because otherwise, what kind of rep representation could there be? Hmm. It's God in human terms. So it's not an absurd idea. But uh, it does appear like um, that uh, people have, some people have, some cultures have graduated from uh, a God who was basically a totem uh, whom they shape uh, and sculpt according to their own biases and their own limitations, for which you can't really blame them. You know, you got to just hope they're going to keep uh, getting better and better. But uh, some people have done that, like when Jesus says in the Gospel of John, uh, it, lady, it doesn't matter whether you worship on Mount Gerizim or Mount Zion at the temple, because God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now that's getting closer to the mark, uh, but of course, uh, if you don't do that, uh, if you just invest your God with the best you know, and you happen to be a bloodthirsty uh, bigot, uh, well, you're going to say God backs that up. God is like me. I mean, he must be at least as smart as I am, uh, and I'm. I think it's okay to wipe out whole nations. Uh, you're, if you have a stunted God like that, you're asking for trouble. Mm. And and I would say that I'll shut up about this in a oh. second. But uh, I would say that people that believe in hell, that God is going to torture people for eternity, uh, you're, you're um, compromising the whole notion of a loving God, it, a being that does that. If you say love is compatible with that, I, I, I don't know what you mean by love anymore. Mm. You, you're just speaking in tongues. Uh, it doesn't make any sense any longer. And But people that think God can send people to hell can uh, be eager to help you get there. Uh, and uh, that's why they, they have this crazy... Uh, murderous zeal, and, and of course Christians have had it too for a long time. Uh, there, I think it's the minority today that that feel that way, but some do, yeah. and that's the result of making God in your a totem in your own image. <laughs> it's it, it's like this poor William Lane Craig. It's kind of like a Mansonite has to defend Charles Manson. He wasn't there, uh, but you know he didn't kill anyone. Um, uh. Yeah, that's that's how the God of the Old Testament is. I mean, here here's the thing. In my opinion, I de I think they developed the hierarchies, kind of like the pyramid. Um, you know, the people are at the bottom, and then you, as you graduate to the top, you have one at the top. Um, mm -hmm. And they developed these hierarchies on their own. Um, I don't think it has anything to do. And then they put their God at the top, basically to give them um, this power over other people to tell them what to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and that's what happened with uh, these so-called Israelites. Um, there's only one steely that has the Israelites on it. Um, that's the only proof they existed, I mean, that I could find. But if, if you have a God that, if you go through the Old Testament, which I have been you know, so many years, and you see that you have a homicidal, jealous maniac, right, who, um, who gets other people to kill for him, kind of like the mob, he puts a hit on them. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's like the Godfather. You know, so they call him yeah. and he sits there. He's like, "Hey, look, you go out and wipe out the Canaanites." Well, we don't want to do that because don't that's not go against the God of Israel. Yeah, and you know, we don't want you. We don't want to do that. Well, we're, I'm going to wander you in the round for in the desert for seventy more or 30, 40 more years to kill you off because I'm sure your kids will be tired of walking in the desert and they'll do what I want. Yeah, uh huh. That God is an asshole, and um, this is simple as that. Um, he's because it's just primitivism. It stems from a, a primitive culture, and because uh, uh, I mean, there were worse things before that. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, wars between rival gangs of gods, like in the Iliad, and so on. Uh, so it uh, or, or regular human sacrifices. I mean, th that had a place in Israel too, but they finally wised up and said, "What the heck are we doing?" Yeah. Uh, and uh, wasn't the gods territorial like you're talking about? I mean, you brought something to mind there. Very interesting. 
um, they had like uh, Yahweh was only good in a certain area because the other area was the, another god, another son of El or whatever. That's and, right. And and so it wasn't really a fight between these people on the ground. They were kind of like axes and allies, like a video game. They're the avatars, and they're they're controlled by this god to go wipe out. To, it, it, it's kind of like angel rivalry. Would that be it? I mean, or god rivalry. It's like I'm the greatest god. Um, because uh, I control this area here, and I control this area here, and if you come into my area, we're going to fight. Well, oh. yes, uh, the thing where uh, uh, the Israelites are, are on the verge of winning against, I don't know if it's the Midi Midianites or the Kryptonites or something, <laughs> uh, they, uh, they get uh, turned back. The, the rival king sacrifices his son to their god, Hamash, and he gives them victory over Israel after Israel marches in and what i mean it's the bible that says this well the only sense that makes is that they did believe each god had his own fiefdom his own little acre and on it he's sovereign so that uh, they shouldn't have gone into the other guy's territory right uh, and uh, now that right. wasn't the universal view occasionally there the people would violate it and they say god told us to do it because you're sinners but even that's just a variation on the theme. Well, and, uh, mm -hmm. Isn't that a cop out? I mean, in a way, though, they say, listen, okay, you're born, this is ridiculous. I mean, people believe this. They're born a sinner, okay? Mm. And they're unholy, okay? And God can't have anything to do with anything unholy, although He created people, which they're saying, okay, which sounds stupid. But to the, how could they con people? Basically, um, they, people get conned every day, like scammers online and but but I but I, I I put it out there that it's all a scam. It's 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 uh, and and this God or this fake thing myth, um, he he's the God of War and the Shazu Yahweh or, or Yahweh or whatever, um, all this nonsense. And he wants people to just go out there and like oh he's jealous too. Well he's a petty God too. Um, he everything he's just mad about everything like like this guy gets a, like like he gets butt hurt all of a sudden people die but mm -hmm. he doesn't kill them because he can't okay but he gets other people to do it that that to me is like i said mobster mentality <coughs> i mean that's a mobster i mean he's a kingpin he's up there saying he's just dictating orders to a bunch of dummies and these dummies are following him to no benefit of their own I mean, what are they getting out of it? It's like at least the Muslims, when they die, they get how many, 40 virgins and all this and, and this stuff. I mean, you know, but when it, when a Christian dies, he's like, well, you know, I get to go to heaven and sit around. And, and I was at church one day, and this guy says to me, it would, oh, man, this is how it's going to be in heaven. We're all going to be walking around praising God all the time. I said, man, I, the hell with that. I ain't going to sit in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, you really? I mean, this guy's got an ego that big. I mean, he's got to, you know, hey, man, everybody just, you know, I'm not doing it. I tell him, he's like, well, you know, God will put something on you. Ajax can't get off. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's really wonderful God. Sheesh. That's a wonderful God that you believe in. And he's like, oh, well, then you have the morons. And this is the absolute, the most moronic statement I've ever heard. And I mean, this deep, subtle ignorance, like I said, it's, 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 it's like it just goes into the mind of these people, right? It's just there. And they say, uh, I God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I mean, yeah, that's how they, you know, yeah. and it's it's like when you look into their faces when they say it, all all you see is like this this glob of ignorance. Yeah, you know, it really it really amounts to saying I believe it. What is it? I said it. God believes it. That settles it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just appealing to, to this imaginary authority. <laughs> uh, they, and and the, I think, you know, the, the idea of the a priestly hierarchy, uh, what gives them the right and the ability to uh, broker deals between you and God? Um, the, a great example of this would be the uh, Garden of Eden story and then the Tower of Babel story mm. because uh, God does uh, uh, Yahweh Elohim they've fused the two gods already by the time this is written uh, he uh, tells the man and the woman in the garden uh, don't 
dare eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because if you do you're going to drop dead and then it turns out the serpent says well, that's a lot of bunk that's not what will happen you'll gain wisdom like gods and so they do and then uh, Yahweh Elohim is pretty steamed at this uh, and uh, he says uh, to the other deities uh, now they their eyes are open they've become wise uh, and they're they're like us uh we got to get them out of here before they eat from the tree of life and gain immortality because then i mean if they can the, the fruit of knowledge included procreation hmm. and so if we have uh, a race of gods here uh, the, you know we're, we're gonna be uh uh out of a job so they the thing is that they're, they're trying to the upshot is the the gods don't want the humans to have the knowledge that they do and that really means that they the priestly hierarchy doesn't want uh, the the people to have their knowledge uh, and same thing with the tower of babel they're they're building this tower and uh, uh, and god uh, yahweh comes down to take a look mm. and uh, he sees this he says holy mackerel i never thought they'd be capable of this and he goes back to report to the other gods and uh, he said what are we going to do and he said okay how about this let's confuse their language so they can't understand each other that'll nip this thing in the bud and indeed it does i mean hand me the hammer that's what you say and the other guys thinks you're saying hand me a bologna sandwich you're never gonna get the thing done <laughs> and uh you see what's going on here the suppression of knowledge the stunting of human potential whose interest is served there well the elite Correct. now the same thing is is true in in uh uh, in India, right, you got the, the Brahmin priests who are the only ones that can offer the sacrifices to the gods, which you need to offer, especially because they had warring clans all over the place before there was a central government. And so the the, uh, the uh, generals and kings would offer uh, big sacrifices of a herd of horses uh, and all kinds of things and, and can you top this because whoever can buy off the gods uh, with the biggest bribe will receive their blessing and have victory uh, but uh, now only this the priest can offer those sacrifices now I mean you can kind of see what's going on here yes uh, and uh, so yeah they uh, it was not uh, democratic Democracy. Uh, they wanted to keep their pro professional prerogatives, which is very much the same in professions today. It's it, it's it's amazing what you just said. It, it's it, it, I mean you're so enlightened. Um, it, it it's like this. If you would bring up and talk about a little bit of a book of Enoch. In Enoch, God was pissed off with the angels, or the sons of God, for teaching man things like. Uh, and then it goes back to. You know, if you, if you touch on it again, where where he brought fire, um, what's his name? He brought fire, and then Prometheus. They, Prometheus, yes, and so he's a devil figure. He's trying to give knowledge to people. It, it, here's, yeah. Okay, so so the bringer of knowledge, okay, is an evil person, and, and that's how the mm. Bible persons it, because they want to keep you as stupid, as ignorant as possible, so you'll serve them. See, you graduate from servitude to sonship according to Christ, according mm. to Jesus. Okay, so a son is, you know, a servant's not, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's, he's more anti-servant and more son. You know, you become a son, you don't have to do that kind of nonsense. But if you're a servant, eh, you do. So Jesus, to me, it partially, it, it, tell me what you think, it, it, through the book of Enoch, and it goes, Jesus was giving them knowledge, okay, and tell them, ah, you're just as good as the priests. And kind of like Paul, yeah, we don't need that. And that's really a bad thing to do, like like even today, to say any kind of conspiracy theories or any of that stuff. Just what were your thoughts on that? Like if you could start with the book of Enoch, that would be, you know, well, about the angels there. They were like Azazel or they were teaching, uh, what was it, women to wear makeup. Uh, I, I don't have it right in front of me, but you're really yeah. we're familiar with that book. Yeah, that, and the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs and other books like that from the time, uh, they said that uh, 
the the uh, the uh, fallen sons of God taught uh, men the use of weapons and women the use of cosmetic and se- cosmetics and seduction and so forth, and uh, that was the origin of sin according to to uh, Judaism, not Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In fact, there's nothing in that about sin. Uh, it's uh, God is a jealous God. He's jealous of his prerogatives. In one of the Nag Hammadi rewrites of the Eden story, the author correctly recognizes that that Yahweh is the one who lies to the man and the woman, and the serpent is the one that tells the truth. Yes. And 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 God is uh, trying to keep them from poaching on his privileges. And the writer says, uh, what kind of a God is this? Is he not a malicious grudger? Well, yeah. And the, the serpent is the Hebrew Prometheus. That's exactly the same thing. And both of them are terribly punished and, and so on. Uh, and so, uh, the, there's a lot of uh, this going around, so you did have a kind of free thinking element too. I mean, how about the, the Psalms where it says, "The fool has said in his heart, there is no God." The fool? Well, who's writing this? One of the Levitical <laughs> singers in the temple. Like uh, they they knew of people that said, I, "I'm not going along with this scam. Uh, there's no God." Oh yeah, uh, you're a fool, and God's going to get you. Um, and it's an observable thing all over the place. Uh, and so what do you do instead? You, uh, you say, well, look, I'm, uh, like, who is it? Was it Shelley or Byron? I can't remember which that uh, depicted uh, uh, Lucifer as the great light bringer, which is what Lucifer actually means. Uh, and, uh, and, and uh, he, was, he acted on behalf of humanity. Uh, one of my favorite things that really ought to be in the Bible uh, is uh, the parable of the Grand Inquisitor in uh, Dostoevsky's yes. The Brothers Karamazov, uh, where Jesus, I think it's in the 13th century, he comes down into Spain and starts preaching among the poor and healing the sick, and it doesn't take long for the uh, the the princes of the church to get wise to this and so they send a couple of goons to arrest jesus and throw him into the clink and uh then that night the grand inquisitor comes to visit jesus and said well you're going to be burned at the stake tomorrow Hmm. Uh, i figure you might want to know why uh and jesus never says a word in this and the inquisitor said um, you want to know why we're going to kill you? Because you screwed everything up. Did, don't you realize that people want to be told what to do and what to think? They're like sheep without a shepherd. Uh, and, and here you came and said, no, you, you have to think for yourselves. Mm. Uh, judge for yourself, Jesus says in uh, the Gospel of Luke somewhere. Uh, and and they, they don't want that. No. Uh, you you look at the burden you're imposing on them. Well, it's taken us all these centuries to undo the damage you did and we're not going to let you screw it up again. Uh, and uh, then he he stops and thinks and he says, "You know, I'm about to run out of juice again, so this probably have to be the end of it." Uh, oh, um no. <laughs> um, he, he says, you know, Jesus, uh, I used to be like you when I was a newly ordained priest. I was very idealistic and all that. But then I saw uh, that we were just uh, ruining people's lives by uh, making them bear the cross of individual responsibility. Uh, but uh, I do remember those days. Tell you what. And he unlocks the door and he says, why don't you just get out of town? Uh, and he lets Jesus go into the night. Uh, I love that version of Jesus, that he's like Prometheus, kind of. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, that is so great. If, if you think about it like this, this is how, well, how I see it. And maybe um, you can tell me if I'm wrong, or but I see that Jesus is against the gods. Um, Jesus, mm-hmm. I see that his death, his burial and resurrection was a big was a big uh, f you to the the gods he he said look 
you know, um, my father loves you because he's really God. He's really the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's, and he, they come up to him. He tells them to kiss his butt, basically, right? He doesn't care what they think. And mm -hmm. then he tells people the truth, like in the Gospel of, uh, of Judas. He's laughing. He's like, yeah, they really think they're worshiping this knucklehead, but they, you know. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's like a spit in the face to the God of the Old Testament. His death barrel, they, the, the, the God of the Old Testament thought, I got him. I killed him. You know, like that, right? Then, mm -hmm. he, then he's like, but he's going to rise from the dead. And then he rises from the dead. Let's say, you know, he ri okay, it's like death can't even hold him. And why would he go down to hell? and release people from Hades. I mean, you know, let them, because he's saying hell with this. This is stupid. This whole mm. thing that you live, it's, is, is, is dumb. You're listening to things that, that are stupid. Okay, stop it. Wake up and think. And that's what, when I see Jesus, he's a bringer of knowledge. He, mm -hmm. you know, and he's saying, look, we don't have to go through this baloney, this nonsense. And then that's why the early church or early Christians uh, not Christians, people that they were calling him like Prometheus. They were actually referring to him as that way, saying, well, he defied this, and, and they were right. And, mm -hmm. and they were shut down by the proto-Orthodox church by preaching this. And then they said, well, mm -hmm. the serpent in the Garden of Eden was Jesus too because he, he gave them knowledge. Okay. Yeah, the all fights. That's right. And that's very profound that, that, that they equated the two. Yes. But it, it if you think about it and you sit there, you know, it took me – it just it hit mis hit me. I started studying it, and reading. It, and I'm like, wait a minute here. Jesus was the rebel, or is the rebel? He says, no, nah, you don't have to do that. That's bullshit. Okay, I mean that's uh, don't who cares? He mm. he he belittles everything. He does. He makes it into like, well, you know, whatever. Who cares what that says? Let's just go over here and do this. Yeah, the law is good, so you don't kill each other. Big deal, right? He's because mm. you you dumbasses need the law. And uh, Paul said, well, oh, the law is for the lawless. And he said, ah, it doesn't really mean anything. And, and that's what, so then the proto-Orthodox church said, well, we're going to make him this way so, mm -hmm. so we can control people. You know, we have to say he's attributed. If they really knew the truth, I mean, let's say the foundation, I mean, the truth that we study, you study, okay, it's like this, that Jesus is a personification of how we all should be. Okay, if we were that loving, that kind, and we didn't care about um, everything, like Paul said, the worldly things, right? The worldly things, and Paul even calls Yahweh the God of this world, and, then, and people debate that. They debate it, you know, thousands, of, but in reality, it's like I feel so sorry for the people, these Christian apologists, because they have to defend. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they have to defend a demon. And, you know, and they do quite successfully defend it. You know, but the apologist, the word, let's just call them liars. That's what they are. I mean, they just lie. And they, you know, and, uh, and I don't like Christian apologists at all. They said, well, you believe in Jesus. You def I definitely do. And because I see Jesus as the loving, kind, beautiful person, okay, and all that other crap, bring people before me, they made all that stuff up. I, I only see him as perfection and strive to be like him and I, it, well i don't have to because i believe christ lives within us that we are we are gods in a sense we are if we're children of gods cows don't give birth to chickens okay <laughs> you know so if we're god get, gave birth to us okay we are gods and that's what they don't want us to know they if we all thought and knew we were gods we wouldn't listen to anybody we wouldn't care what people thought you mm -hmm. know, we, we would we would we wouldn't let this hierarchy of, of nonsense rule our lives. You mm -hmm. know, um, we wouldn't need uh, government. Government means mind control. Government's a government mind. They want to. You know, we don't need all that. Um, you know, Orthodox Church going in there and listening to their nonsense. You know, uh, Jesus did this and Jesus did that. You know, um, they don't know what Jesus did, and and that's your contention too, because you say you're uh, you agree with the mythicists. Well, the mythicists, in a in a sense, are right. The the Jesus that they that they've created is a myth. You know, to me, yeah, it is. They don't know anything, mm -hmm. and what we do know of Jesus, of the person, exist if he existed, which I think he did. I mean, believe he did. Um, he was killed and murdered, and. 
and they say, well, his father, he's dying for Yahweh. No, he's not. Yahweh doesn't have any sons. Neither does uh, neither does Allah, which is the same word, you know, Allah or whatever you call it. Okay, so our Father in heaven does, but he's got to really be God. Our Father, because we didn't come from nothing. I can't believe that, that just all of a sudden spontaneously we're here. There's got to be some intelligent design, okay? Um, so we are here now, or whether we are or not, like that's a question, uh, whether we're somewhere else and we're avatar in here or whatever. But Jesus himself, okay, they say, what would Jesus do? Well, I mean, I've seen kids wearing that. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, yeah, he'd become our, yeah, you want your child to act like Jesus. Yeah, uh, argumentative. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> arguing with you all the time. Um, but why can't people just say that the hell with all this evil nonsense, this, this mm -hmm. you know, the hell with all. Well, they're afraid because uh, hell is uh, like a lit coal being jabbed at you. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're afraid not to, uh, to uh, buy the whole thing. Well, I mean, oh, I got to oh, go ahead. No, I'm saying, if, if you, if, if Jesus, if they truly trust in Jesus, right. Then mm -hmm. if, if I, if, if you took me right now, I'm just this hypothetical over the pit of hell in a helicopter, right? And you threw me out of the, the helicopter, okay? I know that Jesus would never let me go in there. He would grab me and stop me. He wouldn't allow that. They could throw me, but he would stop me from going in, any of that kind of stuff like that, because I have absolute faith in him. Yeah, that's well put, yeah. And uh, But do they have absolute faith in him? No, they don't. They're synergists. You know, they, they believe that they have to somehow accomplish their own perfection. And I don't see it that way. I don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. I think we're already perfect. Hmm. I, th I mean, I, how can we not be? I mean, you know, if, if we were all the same, we'd be cookie cutted and act the same and it'd be boring as hell. <laughs> so, yeah. and, so our father in heaven, I believe, right. And, you know, and per through personal revelation, things that has happened, um, I see him as absolute uh, perfection and love, but not, you know, and you say, we say finitude, right? I see him mm -hmm. as perfection. We are going through this for whatever reason, right? And we have to be smart enough or, or do educated enough to look at things uh, critically all the time, be as wise as a serpent, you know? And that's why I say that to call the show wise as a serpent, not mm -hmm. Jesus even supposedly said wise as a serpent harmless as a dove now right. if jesus wanted you to be wise as a serpent let's say that right then why aren't you wise as a serpent why don't you you know <laughs> yeah. i mean it you know but here's the crazy thing then they come back in the old testament people these orthodox people these controllers and their pyramid scheme and and they say the snake is evil the serpent is evil in the garden of eden look what it did it didn't do anything except tell the truth yeah that's right yeah. It, if it did it lie no it was like do you want to be a slave to this lesser whatever the hell it is right nonsense you won't surely die just eat the damn thing and and you'll get knowledge and you'll gain it and you'll be smarter and and then the, it, the god there even says right hey they've eaten the they're like us uh, they're yes, like that's us. right so so there agree there's agreement there so who lied the, the yeah, guy. that's very clear, but people just can't see it because of what they've always been told uh, it means. Like, who, who? what does God predict? You eat that, you'll die right. uh, the day you eat it. And uh, what does the serpent say? Uh, you won't die. Your <laughs> eyes will be opened. You'll be like God's knowing good and evil. Now, what happens? Do they die? No. Uh, do their eyes open and they become wise like God's? Yes, they do. So who's a lion and who's telling the truth? The snake told the truth. Yeah. The serpent. Yeah. And uh, how was that, that translated? The shining one or the shining? Or, I can't remember the word. Well, uh, well Lucifer means uh, light bearer. Right. Um, and uh, that wasn't necessarily a name for the devil for a long time. There was like a Bishop Lucifer. I mean, it's not, <laughs> you never find a guy named Bishop Satan. Uh, but uh, they, they, uh, that was a Greek translation of the Hebrew from uh, Isaiah 14, Halal, the son of the dawn or the son of Shahar. Wait, wait a minute. And, wait. Uh, Wouldn't it be Lucifer's a Latin word? 
right? It's a Latin word because the Greek is has a, I can't remember the word. Uh, I can't remember the word in the Greek. But because I was in, when I was in class, uh, I asked the, t the professor, I said, hey, listen, why is a Latin word in a Greek Septuagint? He said, yeah, you're the first person who asked that question. You know, I mean, well, the Pharaoh, like Christopher, is Christ bearer. Right. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll have to look that up. I used to think it was Latin, but then I thought, wait a minute, it sounds Greek to me. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, because yeah, when I saw that, I was like, that's that's a Latin word in the Greek Septuagint. Maybe I'm wrong, but that, and I, I remember reading the word in Latin, because Lucy is the word where light comes from. Yeah. Know, like that. So that's, that, that, yeah, that's Latin. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong. But I, no, I, I bet you're right. Yeah, I'm yeah, and, uh, about that. Yeah, because because the uh, so when when you the shiny one or the whatever the morning star Venus whatever it's talking about right, um, mm -hmm. these people have adopted that nonsense. You know, um, there's no one named Lucifer. That's actually not a name, and uh, there is no it, listen. Satan works for Yahweh. I mean, you know. Yeah, it, that's it, right. In the <laughs> Old mean, Testament, it, yeah, and even in the New. Yeah, he works for Yahweh, and. Uh, so that's his boss. That's his underboss. I mean, you know, that, I mean, he, you know, he's a hitman, and he's like, "Hey, go out there and destroy Job because you know, I mean, I want him done because you know he's got to worship me wholeheartedly and kiss my ass." <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, here's the thing: if you met a person, a person, a human being right now that acted like the Old Testament God, you just call the straight the, the men in white coats, man. Mm. I mean, because he's a. I got to read you something germane to that very thing. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, uh, the dialogues of Alfred North Whitehead. Uh, he, he says, uh, as for the Christian theology, can you imagine anything more appallingly idiotic than the Christian idea of heaven? What <laughs> kind of deity is it that would be capable of creating angels and men to sing his praises day and night to all eternity? It is, of course, the figure of an oriental despot with his inane and barbaric vanity. Such a conception is an insult to God. Yes, uh, that's that's beautiful. That's exactly 100%. Look, you and me, you and I, we we, well, we agree. Oh, but look, the, the craziest thing I've ever seen that I see every day is it on Facebook, on these places. I post up there, Moses never existed. God said he did. No, God didn't say it. Oh, my what, what, the, the, the Bible is not, and I repeat this, not the word of God. Neither is the Quran. Neither is any Tanakh. And in the Jewish stuff, any of the, listen, it's all speculation. It's all nonsense. And, you know, look, how, there's four gospels. Am I right? Yeah, they well, do, four in the canon, yeah. In the canon. They don't agree with each other at all. Right. I mean, how did he go to Egypt? And I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And, and, because, because it, and then they say, here's an apologist, a liar. Well, it's th four people describing the same event, and they don't get it different. That's, oh, yeah, right. Uh, that just does not. I mean, that happens, but that doesn't apply to what's going on in the Bible. No. And if you say, here's the thing. Um, I heard a person, uh, what, well, I'm sorry, I read something someone wrote the other day about me. And it says, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you said that, uh, that it was borrowed from the book of Mark, you know, and I, how, I'm the devil because I said that, by the way, I mean, this is what they, they post on Facebook and, I, and wow. I said, uh, all I said was that they borrowed from this book, you know, that, that, that it was, a, you know, they just made it up. And uh, and how did they know? Uh, okay, let's say that everything they believe is true. How did they get all this information on Jesus's genealogy? And how in the hell did they know where he was born? And how did you know? And why is Jesus being born of a virgin the same as any Greek myth? Yeah, and, I mean, and it, why can't you harmonize the two genealogies? <laughs> I mean, it's just all kinds of things. And uh, this is why I constantly beat this drum. If you say, well, uh, there are two genealogies that don't agree because uh, the two uh, evangelists 
didn't really have information, so they hypothetically constructed it, which is partly what modern genealogists do. Yes. Not everybody has full records, so they, they hypothetically say, well, I, I bet this one with the same last name is the son of that one. The timing would be right. And so it's not like they're trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes, but it's not accurate. And when you can explain why it's not accurate you're actually defending the bible because otherwise uh, they think well if it's not actually a hundred percent infallibly true uh it's what a hoax uh it's just written by a bunch of stupid people no uh if that you're insulting the bible that way yes uh, whereas i think if you can say uh if you can explain why does the flood story why is it so redundant and why does it have contradictions throughout uh well uh well when you can explain there are two distinct stories that have been woven together and they didn't dare leave anything out oh well, so it's not just an incoherent mishmash of, of stupidity. Uh, it, it actually makes sense. I am defending the Bible when I say that, not attacking it and making it look ridiculous. You, there's there's something. A guy, Heinrich Dietmer, do, do, I have his book here somewhere. Um, I, I might be butchering his name. Um, he wrote a book. This is a, was a comparison to Satan uh, Jesus to Satan or to Lucifer and to Yahweh, and he claimed that Jesus had more in, more in common with Lucifer. And I and I was like, uh, which I'm I'm looking for the book. I mean, I like that, but uh, I'll I'll get the name. And I was I read it and I thought, well, you know, it, of course the Christians, you know, they 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 were going to burn this book. Uh, that's why I bought it. And um, <laughs> you know, I said, why are they burning this book? What thank you? Yeah, and it's so. It's so offensive, you know, to these people. And I, I said, well, what's so offensive about it? Well, he makes a hell of a case, right? Um, his case is so strong that I'm like, wow. And then he said, modern day Satanists, he was talking about witches and Satanists and stuff. They uh, have more faith than Christians. And I'm like, well, how the hell is that possible? He does this reversal, like this inverted thing that uh, shows uh, the psychology of it all, which is, uh, which is shocking. I mean, it's like... Jesus did not go along with the status quo. He didn't. He didn't walk in there and say, yes, you're doing a perfect job killing people and murdering people. Uh, you're doing a fabulous thing, yes. He said, no, you're evil, you're vipers, you're vile. You know, you're, you're, you're like open you're, you're sepulchers, you know, you're whited sepulchers. I mean, he says, you're, 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 all you preach is death. I preach life. And okay, so he's a humanist. But, they, but mm -hmm. there's a book by someone called Satan is the Biggest Humanist. I can't remember the name of the person. You might know what I'm talking about. That um, rings a bell. I never read the book. No, it's, it's like this. The, that's, it came out the same time as I'm okay, you're okay. I don't know if you ever read that. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and, and I was, um, so if Jesus was the biggest humanist. Now, see, here's the thing. Jesus was asked, um, they asked, was it the sin of the parents or the sin of whatever? Oh. For, for the, why was a man born blind, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said neither, you know, like that. I mean, he says he's born blind so I could heal him, which yeah. is a real smart statement. I mean, people don't realize how, how profound that is, what he's saying. He's basically saying, I don't give a shit what Yahweh put on his ass. I'm taking it off. He's my French. Huh. <laughs> you know, he, he, he didn't care. Don't touch a leper. No, I do. I'm touching a leper, you know, because there's no sense uh -huh. in this. This is stupid. He's walking around basically saying, What's going on here is is incredibly ignorant. What's going on here is dumb. No one cares, you know. Um, well, we care because God, like that idiot said to me, God put something on him. Ajax can't get off. Well, Jesus took it off of him. <laughs> Jesus mm. took it off. I mean, they they were like suffering. The woman can't be touched because she has blood. Her her her. She's menstruating, right? So no one would help her, and she comes and touches the hem of his garment. That's beautiful. And he turns and says, "Who touched me?" And she says, I did. And she's healed immediately. He's, he's, you know, I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, that, that's, that brings you to tears. And uh, because that's love, man. That is showing love. He, he's like, okay. But then they turn Jesus into this asshole in the Bible, too. Um, he's, this woman comes and are praying for her daughter, the, the Canaanite woman. And, uh, 
and and he's like, well, I'm, I came here for the for the Israelites. You know damn well Jesus never said anything like that. That's bullshit. That they made that up. They, Unless it's a Socratic irony, which is not implausible, that if he's trying to see what she will say, like uh, how how badly do you want this he's like raising the bar right uh th that's possible but it does doesn't sound very good no it it's it it's 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 like this i, I think you're that's correct that's a good statement he could have been testing her but i don't think that the story in and of itself you know if i don't know if you researched that i mean i've, I've spent about five years now um well and i'm still on it um i think that was added i think they made could it I, I think that they made it up and uh you know, it, it's like this. I, this guy said, how could you agree with Dr. Price and Dr. Carrier? I was asked. I'm not going to name the person who asked me that question. I said, because they're right. <laughs> and he said, you know, the, I, I, Dr. Carrier, he said something really clever one day. And I, I was trying to find on YouTube to play it, right? He said, well, if Jesus is real and he was a real person, then everything in the Bible, you know, it, it, it can't be true. And, and the people are looking at him like, what's he talking about? You know, and it, like, it didn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. I mean, he can't have been in five places at one time, and he damn sure couldn't have traveled 200 miles in a day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that that's mythological. That's not true. Yeah. So Carrier is bright, smart yeah, guy. You know, yeah. I mean, super bright. And he, when I heard him sure say is. that, when I heard Car Dr. Carrier say that, I was like, just, he was sitting right next to you when he said it. Uh -huh. And I was like, and you looked at him, you know, when he said it, you know, I remember you, you all, and he was continually talking and you commented on it, but briefly, but he makes, you said you agreed with him. I believe mm -hmm. I, I, I can find that tape. And I was like, man, how can anyone criticize this guy? He's thinking and he's putting out his thoughts and his thoughts are genuine, real. He's not crazy. He doesn't hate God. He's trying to show you, hey, look, think about it. He's being wise as a serpent. He's saying, well, this this can't be true. All this bullshit, this, how, he said, how he said it when he was sitting there drinking a drink on one video, he said, how can all this bullshit be true? That's the words he used. It can't. It's impossible. And they're like, well, yes, it is. No, you have to have stitchers, which I think he used the word sewers, whatever he called it. Um, you have to sew all this shit together. And that's what apologists do. And that's what their, yeah. jo that their jobs are tough. And, but why can't people know the truth and the truth will set them free? They're not under any obligation to follow an Old Testament God at all. If you're a Christian, like Marcion said, he's a, be mm -hmm. and, you know, he's a beast. I mean, he's, he's evil. I mean, how the hell can Jesus come from something like this? That's critical thought. I mean, he's thinking. The other mm -hmm. people are not. Clearly, they're not thinking. Have you ever you've read their stuff? I've read the uh, all a lot of it. It's all on the website Christ Lives in Me Fellowship or Christ Gnosis Gnostic .com. You can read the antithesis, the, the uh, what is it, the heresy, the anti heresy, you know, um, and you read it. You listen, read what this guy's writing, what these people are writing from the church. There, it doesn't make any sense. You can write it down 15 times and read it backwards. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but And people are like, oh, that that's that's not profound knowledge. What that is, it's shutting down knowledge. There's profound knowledge and shutting down knowledge. They shut down knowledge. And and then here's another one. You, God has quit doing miracles. Where did they, the reason they said that, there was a, why did they say it? Because, Dr. Price, they said God doesn't do miracles and no such thing as personal revelations anymore because if they had have allowed that, then they would have lost power. They were in fear of losing their power as their apostolic authority. Well, oh, in fact, you can see that happening in Mormonism. Uh, Joseph Smith uh, pro promotes this uh, new part of the Bible, so to speak, the Book of Mormon, and uh, it gets a huge number of people following him. Well, several people eventually said, hey, you know, if you're in the market for new revelation, I've had one myself, and here it is. And the Smith would say, oh, no, you don't. Uh, nice knowing you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and it's like once his new radical revelation becomes canon nobody else's revelations are welcome because that would uh, 
you know, to knock the Apple card over. Uh, and uh, Smith would lose his status as the revealer. Right. That's what they, so they, they made up this, like that, like we're talking about the Epistle of Clement, right? That's manufactured mm. nonsense. Um, I read it. I started studying it. And uh, a guy pointed it out to me. He says, uh, that's nonsense. I was in school. He said, do you actually believe that? And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, because I was a young Christian guy. And he said, and he got me thinking. I'm sitting in the cafeteria. I'm like, hmm, you know, is this real? Is this, you know, so I started realizing there's more than one author. I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. wait a second mm -hmm. here. Wait a second. How, how can this be? Mm -hmm. So then it made me look further and further into it, right? And uh, I went to the pastor of church I was attending. He said, you shouldn't look at that. I said, "What? You, 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 uh, your your earthly mind is an enemy against God." And I'm like, "What the fuck? What are you saying?" I said. So he pulls a scripture out of his ass. He says, uh, "The human mind, your human was is, is an in, in, enmity." I said, "Enmity." He's using the King James against God. I said, "How does that sound?" Someone home and. A mother, she says to me, you know, I talked to my mom. I said, you, you see the scripture here? We, we're not even allowed to think. And my mother is from Iceland, and she looked at me, and she said, That's, that right there is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. And Yes. Yeah. You know, and, but they, they, they use these scriptures at these churches, right? And what they do is they, it's they trap you. You're trapped. You're scared of going to hell. Okay, yeah. so they got the hell right in their back pocket. And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, how are you... The, the, this is a juvenile question. I mean, it's not even ignorance. It's actually some questions that... How can you burn in hell when you don't have a body? Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. That, I mean, not for, that doesn't make sense. So, But I, you, you're afraid to question it because you don't want to find out by experience. Yeah, but, I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of these near-death experience things on uh, YouTube. I don't know if you ever watched those. I find them fascinating. Yeah, I've read about them. Yeah. Oh, if you can watch them on YouTube, it's very, very good. I mean, I, I don't, I never thought I'd really like watching them. I thought, ah, well, you know, and then I got one and I became addicted. And I've watched, <laughs> you know, I've watched hundreds of them. And every, wow. Yeah, and every one. that many? There's a lot of them. You would it'd blow your mind. You need to look near-death wow. NDEs. Oh, wow. This guy was dead for seven hours, which is unbelievable. And he came back to life, which is in the morgue. I mean, this is a true story. Wow. I'm like, seven hours? He had no brain activity, no heart, nothing, right? But he's all of a sudden back alive, so he resurrected. And, wow. And uh, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty tripped out. So if you listen to his experience, he doesn't talk about anything like a hell or any of this stuff. You know, he talks about, he does see a person, and he asks the person to see Jesus, and he laughs, and he smiles. So, and he, and he's talking to people and he feels love and, and all this other stuff. And it wasn't, he wasn't even in his brain because it was dead. So I'm like, the, he, every, I've never heard, none of these Bible stories make sense at the end of the, you know, it, to, to what these people are saying, except mm -hmm. a couple, you know, nuts that, um, that are evangelical Christians, right? I, that, that, uh, oh, I was in hell for five hours and it's bullshit. Um, <laughs> You know, it's this is bullshit, and they they're just making it. That I believe that's compl just to combat the NDEs, because these people yeah, do, probably yeah they do. It's it's amazing. The whole Gospels narratives were written to combat Marcion. That's it. Mm -hmm. People can't see that. They're like, well, no, that's true. No, the, these were written in opposition. They said, well, we got to make Jesus being born. Now, how about me making him born of a virgin? That's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're Romans and Greeks, and oh yeah, born of a virgin, man. That would really that would seduce the crowds. The crowds out there, oh, they'd love to hear about that, like Hercules, and and mm. and and then here comes you and you, brilliant man, and another brilliant man, Doctor Carrier. He says that's you, humorization. <laughs> I almost fell out of the chair when I heard y'all use that term. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I said, damn, they're right on the money. I mean, they they see exactly. You're looking into it. That's what makes you, like I said, you you so interesting and knowledgeable and valuable to, to people, their knowledge. Um, because they need to hear reality, the truth. Yeah. They, they, you know, you can't tell them, oh, well, you're going to heaven when you die. You don't know what the hell's going to happen to you when you die. You don't know anything, yeah. you know. Um, and um, 
but but they they tell them, oh yeah, you know. And, and here's the crazy thing: if you look at if you think about what I'm saying, do you think that I'm crazy? Because I believe Jesus is a rebel. I believe he's rebelling against Yahweh. Oh, and, I, that's uh, no, that makes a lot of sense. Because he he healed people when they were sick. Okay, he changed their reality and made them well. He went around he and he cast out devils. Okay, according or demons. Uh, unclean ones, whatever they were, right? Whatever you want to call them, they could be sickness, whatever. Then and not driving 55, 56, and 55 like these nuts say at these deliverance churches. But Jesus, yeah, you know, they're they're nuts. And these, but Jesus, then he he dies on a cross. Oh, let's say he does the star roost, whatever, right? They murder him, and the demiurge kills him. You know, like that. Let's say the demiurge wanted to get rid. Of, he needed to get rid of him. So he gets rid of him. He says, well, if he kills me, I'm going to be resurrected because he, you know, because I can beat death because death is not real. Death is, uh, he's simulated or making it happen so he can reincarnate you like some of the Gnostics say, right? You trap you in that reincarnation wheel and, mm. uh, or, or what Platoism, the, what is it called? The Valley of the, oh man, I know all this, um, uh, forms. And, uh, uh -huh. you know, so you, you have all this going on. Then you have, but you have one person. Not a religion, but one human being, one person. Let's say, you know, the son of God or whatever, the son of our father. He, he, he's enlightened. He knows everything, right? He's, he sees all this stuff as petty. And people don't notice that. Everything to him, even in the gospels that they may have manufactured, but there's some truth in there, he saw everything as petty. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And Paul did too. Paul's like, yeah, the famous ah. statement, uh, you Pharisees, you strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> Yes. And, but think about it. He's walking around. He's like, ah, this is, I don't believe he did anything in the temple and all that, you know, tipped over tables. That just sounds stupid. Um, but on the other hand, I did a sermon years ago called the Equinox of the Gods, which I stole from Aleister Crowley. Uh, and it was about the temple cleansing. And I said, one way of looking at this is that he's attacking the old religious order to establish a new one. Uh, and uh, that uh, it's sort of a Marcionite approach. And uh, but who knows? I mean, there's millions of interpretations of this. It's. Do you think that they? I mean, that I believe in conspiracies, and uh, I think that they did this. I think they, that Egypt did it too. I think they all did it in times past. Now, if you and me, let's say you and me right now, I could take you back in the past. We're both in our twenties, okay, or maybe thirties. We could put some togas on, whatever, and we could walk into one. <laughs> yeah, we could walk into one of these villages, right? You know, there's a lot of hot girls, you know, or me and you, and we can, you know, and we, and we walk in there, we done, you know, we, and we, we say, we came from our God, you know, and we want to, you know, bless you and take care of you. And, and we, and we figured out a little bit of magic, right? I mean, you know, whatever we call it, a cigarette lighter, who knows, you know, and they're like, oh, there must be from God because they control the fire. You know, we, we knew a little bit of alchemy, whatever, you know, uh. and, uh, they would have us as the prophets of the village or the town. And then we could just, you know, hey, we we take up all your virgins and bring them on over here. You know, we need those, right? And then mm. after after a while, things would build upon what we did. Okay, our God that we just manufactured out of nowhere, right? <laughs> we just made this shit up, and we could take over. And then, but they, but years later, they would write about us and you hemorrhage, you know, like that. You uh -huh. they, they'd make us gods. The gods came to us. Um, Bishop Taylor and Dr. Price came to us and we worship these two gods. <laughs> you know, I mean, like that. And yes, they had sex with every girl. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not funny. But no, they, you know, that's called exploitation. Okay. That's, uh -huh. a, that's, that's what I think happened. And, and, and I like Dr. Carrier said the same thing. And, and I'd already, concluded that in my head i'm like ah, it's just exploitation he said the same thing in a um mm. in a sit down conference with a guy i cannot remember i've got the video uh i actually downloaded the video and saved it to my computer so i could watch it i watched it like 20 times uh oh he said that uh yeah, that's what they did i mean they exploited people they just bullshitted them he used the word bullshitted in the video right <laughs> he said that they uh yeah we and, and i just thought well he didn't say what i just said but if you go into a town like that you become a legend and a legend is at, you know the story told over and over and over and over again it grows you know and 
that's that's it. You tell one person something, it goes around the room to 25 yeah. people, and it comes back to you unrecognizable. So I think that's more or less what happened in, in a lot of the Old Testament. And I think that they, I think it was a one-up or two, by the way, when they came out of Babylon. They're like, oh, wait a minute. You know, our gods did this, and we did that, and this happened here. Oh, wait a minute. We had a guy named, uh, what's an Egyptian name? A Moses, right? <laughs> yeah, and this guy part of the Red Sea, and he did all this crazy shit, and all the plagues of Egypt, which nothing ever happened like that in known history. But, hey, it's still the truth. No, it's not. It's manufactured. It's a truth that you're telling it, but it's not a truth that it's real. So, well, this was the, the scenario in Acts chapter 14 when uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas go to Lyco, Lyco, I can't think of the name now, but uh, uh, they they start talking, start sermonizing, and the, the poor rubes who live there say, hey, these guys are eloquent. I bet this is none other than Zeus and Hermes. And so they drag a bull out to sacrifice to him, and when Paul sees what's going on, he says, no. Oh, wait, wait a second. We're not uh, uh, gods. We're the representative of a god. And, and uh, it's exactly like uh, like you say, only they turned back from it. Yes. Like they, they were about, that was a golden opportunity, but they had the integrity to say, no, no, no. Uh, right. You got it all wrong. I, I really better get going, uh, though, or my phone's going to give out again, just like it did the other night when we were talking. No, this has been good. I mean, this is, yeah, uh, ho yeah. Hopefully, people can learn to question everything, to, to, to investigate everything. And, uh, and Dr. Price, beautiful job. I mean, you know, I, it was, uh, thoroughly enlightening, and, uh, people should, Oh, they're going to get mad. Some people out there, and they're going to be butt hurt. You know, oh, you, 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 you know. But you need to think about what you're. Don't be. Yeah. yeah you just think. No one wants to hurt your faith. If, if you have, but you, if you have faith in the book, you're not. <laughs> no one cares. Um, mm. We have. You know, I put my faith in Jesus, the real Jesus. Not. You know, is he real or Memorex? No, he's real. I do. <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, the real one. And uh, and, and he discounted all that Old Testament nonsense. Some people. Oh, he made a law. Nah, you can him and haw about it, but in reality, Jesus is a rebel, yeah. he, he, and he rebelled against that. So, mm. but maybe not. Maybe whatever you want to believe. I mean, you know, you can believe he was a myth, whatever. I mean, I, I, uh, I can't. You know, it's a lot of times I wish I could, but I just simply cannot. I cannot deny the mirror. I mean, things that I've seen. Well, actually, that's not incompatible with mythicism. Because uh, mythicists tend to believe that the early Christians believed Jesus was a celestial being who had never assumed human form. Uh, and that's entirely compatible with the, the uh, spiritual being uh, who contacted you. Yes. Uh, that doesn't prove mythicism. I'm just saying that it's not an antithetical to it. But here's, here's a good question before we go. Just one, one thing. What does it matter? That you, you know, that's the truth. What does it really matter? I mean, Jesus oh, isn't I here agree. in the flesh now. That's right. That's right. I mean, so he's, yeah. he's, he's a celestial being right now. Yeah. Jesus says to Thomas, do you believe because you've seen? Well, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Well, you can push that a little farther and say, did those guys actually see him? And yet there is such a thing as faith in Jesus. Right. What about, didn't you say something about um, the text where they some people touched him and it went through him? Yeah, the Acts of John, a fascinating uh, book from the second or third century. Yes, yeah, and uh, well, he 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 represents to me the spirit of humans of the people, mm. and uh, mm. and the son of man. That's right, and he represent and and that's it, he represents the uh, the the truth and life and life more abundantly. Not life, you know. Look, you can't be alive and be afraid all the damn time. That's right. Yeah, that's living death. That's right. So he's he says life, and I agree with him. And uh, mm. do I believe he was killed? Yes. Do I believe he rose from the dead? Why not? I mean, you know, why not? He beat death, and that's what it looks like. It's like to show you. If I was trying to show you, Doctor Price, something, and you, it was, it, I'd have to show. I couldn't tell you. You wouldn't believe me. I'm in the show me state. You, so would you be like, well, you know, yeah, I, I, I can levitate this car outside my house right now. And you say, well, bullshit. Well, if you believe that, you know, we'll call the nutbag on your area. You know, they'll be over there to pick you up in a little while. But if you actually came over here and saw me, 
levitate this yeah. car. So it's he had to prove that he could beat death. This is all an illusion. This is all nonsense. I think that's what he did, and uh, and that's why he's so that's why he's so famous, or he made it. You know where he's at right now because he showed mm. people. He 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 was true to what he said. I can you know if you kill me, uh, any I'll raise from the dead in three days. It doesn't matter. Whatever I'm raising back up, and uh, so I believe he did, and mm. I believe he ascended. But then again, I believe he came down as a full bodily person. So you know that's all, and I believe that he was just tired of it. I mean, uh, there's got to be ty- people get tired of it, brother. And they gotta, they gotta, they gotta think. Start thinking, man. We don't need all these wars and all this shit. We don't need oh, it. No, we don't need all this. This, this, this crap. All we need to do is stop buying into an old, ancient religion from hell. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's all. And uh, you know, Jesus said, "Love one another." That's a beautiful. Yeah, I, I love that uh, scene in uh, the Last Temptation of Christ, where uh, Jesus is giving parables, and one guy doesn't like it, and another one uh, who's a fan of Jesus starts running after him with rocks to throw at him. And Jesus said, "Wait a minute! I, I didn't say anything about killing. I said love. It like <laughs> it, it was already starting." Uh, yeah. What a great play! It's awesome, William Defoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I like when he, Paul says, I didn't really do that. Jesus was telling him, he says, well, I'll just make you up. Yeah. You know, I don't need you to do it. Oh, it. oh, that was great. It was all, it was all, I love that. I actually got it on DVD. I have it here. Don't on, tell me what happened to me. Yeah. yeah I, I, oh, that was great. Uh, yeah. That's the thing is, cause it causes people to think, but people hated that movie. But, um, Oh boy. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Yeah. yeah but Hey, I know you got to roll and your phone's yeah. down, but it was a great show today. And, uh, yeah. Every, everybody just tune in for more. I mean, we're discussing, um, yeah, very important things and things that you might learn. You may disagree next week in your next one. You just, you want to send your, uh, your questions to Ray one nine R A Y one nine six seven Taylor at gmail.com. I'll be happy to, uh, answer your questions or dr price answer your questions yep. um but y'all have a great afternoon and thank you so much dr price and we'll, we'll... Oh, thank you all right brother you, you have a good night good day okay Bye. whoa what a great show please tune in like subscribe today and share with your friends Yes, the knowledge, the wisdom, wise as a serpent. Thank you very much and have a great, great day.